Father God, we thank you that we can come into your presence today. We come into the presence of our loving Heavenly Father. We come together as your family. We also come into the presence of the King of Kings. And Father, we thank you so much that you sent your Son Jesus into the world to make a way for us to come into your presence. We thank you for Jesus who died to clean us from our sins, to enable us to come into the presence of a holy God. So as we gather now in your presence, we pray that you would lead us through our service. May your Holy Spirit be our guide and leader as we work worship together today. And we do commit to you all the things that will be happening in the coming week as well, that your Holy Spirit would lead us through and help us to live to your praise and glory. Amen. <laughs> and now Pearl's coming to lead us. Pearl's coming to lead us in our prayers. Yes. Thank yes. you, Pearl. Morning, church. Good morning. Let's come together and pray to our holy God. <laughs> Father God, it is a true blessing and a joy to be here this morning to worship you, our one and true God, holy and worthy to receive the glories and praise we bring you. Thank you for your son, our Saviour Jesus, who gave up his life as a sacrifice for us all and made a way to reunite us Mankind to our Father God. We thank you for the comforts we enjoy living in the UK, for the National Health Service and state schools, for social housing, transport services, but mostly, Father, we, we give you thanks for the right to worship you in safety and freedom. We pray for the future generations in our country to also be able to enjoy these provisions and freedoms, Lord. Father, we pray for the very many countries in the world who are ruled by corrupt, unjust governments who allow the weakest and the most vulnerable of their society to suffer. We ask you, Father, to put compassion in the hearts of people in position of power. We pray also for an end to organized crime and to fight the trafficking of women and children for the purposes of forced labor and sexual exploitation. We pray desperately for this world, Father, with so many war-torn countries. We pray mercy for Syria's Christians. Lord, keep them strong in their faith. And we ask for Jesus to reveal himself to the millions of Muslims causing the suffering there. We pray especially for the children of the Yemen and the Democratic Republic in the midst of the violence and poverty. Please, Lord, provide for their needs. We continue to pray for Ukraine and Afghanistan, and we ask that you would help to bring peace to these nations after years of war. We pray also continued peace between North and South Korea, and also China and Taiwan. Father God, in this year of our Lord, 2024, we and many other Christians are hopeful of very much change for the good in the world. With so many general and presidential elections being held this year, yesterday, Taiwan remained a democratic country. Soon, India, America, Asia and Europe vote with over 18 African nations too. 
We ask you, Lord, to rule in the hearts of those standing for elections, and we ask for all the elections to be conducted in a fair and unbiased and honest manner. Father, we pray for all whose lives have been disrupted by the flooding here in the UK. We pray courage and strength as they clean and repair their homes. Give hope for the future to farmers and wisdom to the government and um, environmental agencies for any future flooding. Lord, in a fallen world, suffering is inevitable. But we praise you for your plan of forgiveness and salvation. We thank you for your written word, which gives us hope and encouragement. Your Holy, your, your Holy Spirit, which comes and guides us in the future. We pray now, Lord, for the remainder of our time here this morning, that our worship will be honouring to you. And your spoken word will be understood, accepted, and acted upon in our lives. In all this evil and uncertainty, we stand secure in you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. We ask all these prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, later, Scott will be speaking to us from Mark chapter one and he wants us to give out some cards where are they um yeah, so yeah. so during the next song uh we'll be giving out some cards which will be a a visual aid or part of his talk so please don't get distracted <laughs> from singing um just hold it with you and you'll find out all about it during Sir, uh, scott's talk later on so uh, oh, thank you on. thanks, thanks. Uh, let, let's pray as we come to look at this passage. Father God, we come this morning with all sorts of worries and personal struggles, and um, oh, the, we know the devil wants to take your word away from us and help us forget it. Um, but Father God, we ask that you would speak through your word and your spirit to help us, not just in our minds, but in our lives as well, and encourage us as we... Um, face things that life has to throw at us. We ask this in your name for your glory alone. Amen. Amen. Well, I've, I've had a card handed out to you. Um, let me try and see, has anyone heard of the game Top Trumps before? Okay, there's, there's quite, a, quite a few people here, yeah? Um, uh, it, I've worked out, it's, it, it first was published in 78, so um, uh, you know, maybe maybe it missed your bar, but I mean, even in the colonies, um, uh, we had them in South Africa, and um, uh, I thought, well, you know, uh, we could have a game this morning, and uh, I chose the aeroplane theme because this is sort of Doncaster, you know, uh, a, a good good place. In fact, I saw a, a program last night that said the only working Vulcan plane is in Doncaster. I didn't I didn't realize that. Um, right. Sorry? It doesn't fly anymore. I just said. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so I thought we could start, and I, I apologize if you can't um, quite see your uh, card, um, but uh, I've, I've got one as well. So maybe I should go first, should I? Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm going to do max speed. Let me start this out. This airplane, has anyone got a max speed lower than 900? If you can see it. Yeah, you got max speed. Okay. Sorry, you guys have lost so far. So you, you would have to give your cards to me, but you can give them to me afterwards. Uh, anyone got a max speed uh, lower than 1,500? Okay. Okay. Who, who's still in the game? Who's still in the game? He's got an airplane speed above 1,500. Anyone still in the game? Put your hand up, no? I've already beaten everyone. Yeah, what, have you, what is your number? Whoa, what plane is that? Do you know? Oh, it's an American plane. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, so, so um, I, okay, well, anyone got uh, above 
1,800 miles per hour. I mean, that, that's pretty fast. You get a speeding fine for that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, so, sorry, I, I, I knew this was going to because this is one of my favorite airplanes. Uh, max speed, 2,200 miles per hour. That's three times faster than the speed of sound. Um, it's the, well, there's top drums, sorry. By the way, if you don't top drums, you can get get uh, any subjects. Um, this sermon is sponsored by top drums. Um, uh, and, uh, but uh, basically, um, yo, you know how it works, I don't have to explain it to you, but, but this is my card, and you see there, 2,200, um, it, it's even got a, the thing mind blow on it. I think that's a bit of a, a newer thing, saying it's really, basically, I think if it had to, height, range, uh, weight, wingspan, it kind of uh, beats all of them, except for firepower, because this was um, a plane that was used for spying uh, during the Cold War. Um, and it was made in the 70s, well, actually, start, yeah, this is, well, I think early, late 60s, but 70s, and it's still faster than any plane. So, so really, it, you, you've won the game if you've got, uh, got this card in your deck. Um, and why am I talking about, by the way, uh, because I won, I'm going to take all your cards, you can't have them. Uh, okay, so I'll get them afterwards. Uh, why am I talking about top trumps? Well, you will see that uh, we're looking at, at Mark's gospel, and hopefully you'll see why I've, I've, I've chosen this way to explain about one card that beats everything. Because we're looking at a series called Jesus is King, and um, uh, we had a, anyway, there was a nice picture of a, a, it looks like a, a pawn chess piece, but actually there's the king, people underestimate Jesus, and um, Oh, there we go. Oh, you did it for me. So, Jesus King, we're looking at the series Jesus King, and uh, last week we we saw the beginning of Mark's Gospel. Um, it uh, it starts off, it hasn't got the Christmas story, it just starts off getting right out there, and uh, Mark is writing. Mark, by the way, we think is was Paul Peter's, Peter's sort of, uh, I don't know what you want to call him, sort of right-hand man, and he he went and wrote down all Peter's sermons. So that's what we think Mark's Gospel is. It's one of the earlier, earliest books. And Mark wants to write to people around the world and just say to them, this, I want to tell you this, this is the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. And um, he wants us to see that Jesus is the King. And it starts, well, first of all, by him backing up from, if you've got your Bible open, um, first two verses uh, he talks about from the Old Testament, looking forward to saying that Jesus is king. So the Old Testament stamp of approval saying this is about Jesus being king. The last Old Testament prophet, even though he's in the New Testament, uh, John the Baptist, he was saying Jesus is king. And then God himself says Jesus is king. And I said it was a bit like um, uh, that seal of approval that you have on almost all electronic devices. That's right. There we go. So if you if you go home and look at some electronic device, it will have um, this on it. It's basically saying this device shouldn't burn your house down because it's been approved by the C the European Union something. Um, I forget because they changed. But anyway, that that thing is you'll find it around. It's the seal of approval, and Jesus has got God's seal of approval, the Old Testament and Old Testament prophets, uh, but. Mark wants to convince you himself by showing you what happened. And his big thing that he wants people to know about it in the first half of Mark is, well, who is Jesus? Who is he really? We see Jesus is the king, but now let's see if he actually can back that up. So um, I'll come back to this uh, in a moment. Um, so first verse 1 to six, 16 to 20, um, we're going to see there's something about Jesus that stands out. Now, I've put some pictures up there. Um, try and see if you can figure out what the common thing is. Sorry, I'm really making your brains work this morning. If you can't see it, one is a paper boat with other paper boats behind it. One's a lioness with cubs. Another is penguins. Uh, bottom thing is toy dinosaurs, uh, ducks. What are they all doing? Can you see what they're doing? Following. Okay, so the first thing is we see that Jesus has the authority to call people. And so we see he meets the first disciples, and they, they just come to him. They follow him. Um, and um, we see that he's, 
you know, it seems strange. You know, it's they're not in a trance of uh, getting up and just following him, but that but they leave uh, their work behind. Um, another gospel we see that uh, it is. So if you have a look at verse sixteen, uh, Jesus going besides uh, Galilee, uh, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. Simon's also known as Peter, and he says, "Oh, okay, come, come, follow me." And um, they they leave everything and they follow him. They leave their nets behind, which were expensive, um, and they follow him. And then later on, we see um, this James, um, verse 19. When we've gone on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing the nets. Um, and without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So something interesting here, they had hired men. So this was Zebedee and Co., or Zebedee and Sons Fishing Company. And they leave that behind. Now, um, they had heard of Jesus before, and John the Baptist, these particular disciples who were the first ones, had been John the Baptist's disciples. And John had been saying, this is the guy that you want to follow. And so when he calls them, they just leave him. But this is the real thing. This is the king that we've been waiting for. And they're waiting for a king because uh, long ago in Genesis chapter 3, and I've got that sort of downward arrow stock. Um, type icon because as we look through this passage it will be quite clear that um, Satan's kingdom is starting to start to wind down and Satan started his kingdom, his rule on earth way back in Genesis when he messed up God's work God had created a perfect world perfect relationship Um, he had put in place about just listening to him in one particular area and Satan, re- that's not eating from the tree, Satan got and really just destroyed everything. And as a result, we live in a world that is broken, where there's death, and there's sickness, and there's evil, and brokenness, and pain. And so, with all this going on, when this starts, God says, one day, uh, he says to Eve, uh, or he says to the devil, actually, he says, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. One day, a human being, a descendant of, of Adam and Eve is going to come and he's going to squash you, devil. He's going to destroy you and your work. And so now we see uh, this is happening. Uh, the middle one is that his, this devil's head will be crushed. And so people have been waiting for this for a long time. And now Jesus comes on and says, I'm the king. He's a human being. But clearly he's... God's king, and we see his God himself, and he's going to start unraveling, fraying, and destroying the kingdom. Uh, uh, well, I, I, anyway, if you've ever had cats, they like to scratch, and you have to try and make sure they don't scratch the, the furniture and try and make sure they scratch the right thing, because if it's your prized couch or something like that, they're going to start fraying it, and you just need someone to pull in a thread. Maybe you've got a nice jumper. I remember we had, I don't, Edge bought me a really nice jumper from a, a, a charity shop, but it was a, quite a posh charity shop, and um, I washed it, and it shrunk. It was like this proper, I don't know, fancy <laughs> wool. But, um, but, uh, it, but it, something just starts unraveling, and you pull, and you pull, and it starts coming apart, and that's what Jesus is doing. He's trying to unravel the devil. And first of all, he gets people to follow him. He's starting a, a new group, and he's, he's really got power, I think, most politicians would, would, would want, or definitely dictators would want. People follow willingly. They, he doesn't, they don't follow him out of fear. They don't follow him out of guilt. They don't follow him out of something that he can uh, give them. Like, come on, I'll, I'll pay you. Um, I mean, there might be an element of that, because we see later on they start arguing over uh, when he takes over the, the you know, uh, Jerusalem, who's he going to be in charge. But the things, they follow him because of who he is. They recognize that he has this authority that's different from anyone else. Um, so our next thing we see, our next incident, um, uh, let's, let's see if you can see what this is. Um, so uh, there's first two pictures are, are desks, then there's those, what do you call those? Graduation hats, something board. Mortarboard. Mortarboard, yeah. There's another classroom, someone drawing on the... Um, the board, and then something really strange, it's a group of fish. 
What do you call a group of fish? School. school. Okay, so, so the thing is we see here, not, not Jesus is a, a school teacher, but he has authority to teach and over the dominant forces of darkness and evil. Now, the reason why I put it in, in brackets like that is because verses uh, 21 to 28, they talk about him having power over demonic forces, but they really want to see that it's his teaching that he teaches differently. And um, I'm just going to read uh, 21. Uh, I'll just read uh, 22. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority. So this is the key word here, authority. Not as teachers of the law. The other teachers of the law would say, oh, you know, we quote this passage, but Jesus is teaching with authority. It's almost as if what he's teaching from, he knows the author or he wrote it himself. Um, I, I, I love uh, audio books and um, I, I used to get them from the library, but now they're still on CD. And do, Does anyone still have a CD player at home? Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're rare things, but but you can stream audiobooks. You can listen to them online. And it's, it's great because you can get information while you're doing other chores. But the really good audiobooks sometimes are written by uh, or when the author reads it himself because he wrote it and he knows where to put that pause, that, that, that he knows what he wants to get out, out of the passage. Um, or maybe, you know, I've never been to one where there's, you have a, a book signing and the author reads a part, part of his book. He knows it because he wrote it, and that's what Jesus is doing. It's, it's like he's teaching, but it's it's as if he knows the person wrote. Well, he wrote it himself as he's opening up the Old Testament scriptures, and so they see something totally different. And the thing is, as he's teaching, something else begins to happen. So, um, twenty three, just then a man in a synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, "What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth?" Have you come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. And the impure spirit shook him and violently came out of him and shrieked. Now, if that happened uh, in a moment and you went home to tell people, what would you be talking about? You'd be talking about the incident, but this is what they said. 27, the people were so amazed that, and asked each, each other, this is 27, what is this? a new teaching, and with authority. So they're more amazed at what he's teaching. Uh, he even gives orders to impure spirits in their bio. And so um, there's two things going on here. First of all, we might go, well, now that's this whole demonic possession thing. This is, sounds like um, something out of a film. This is nothing we deal with. Or maybe we might go, oh, well, no, it's, maybe it's something they're dealt, dealt with on an everyday basis. And that's not really true because we don't see it mentioned in, in, in the Old, Old Testament much. Um, and and um, it's it's not like like any exorcism I've seen. If I've ever seen a, a film where people do rituals and try and do things. By the way, us in the West m might be less familiar with this, but that is changing. But but in other parts of the, of the world, that the people see that there's demonic forces. Um, and, and one of the best ways to try and help us understand the difference between places, uh, other parts of the country, is the world is, I don't know if I've told you this before, when I was at Bible college, someone said, picture a city ruled by Satan. And so, you know, in our class we came up with, you know, maybe it's like Las Vegas or Birmingham, no, I'm joking. Um, uh, it, you know, we, we think of, or, or something like that, and actually he said, no, perfect neighborhoods, no crime, white picket fences, because why would you need God? And so when life is good and affluent and things like that, the devil doesn't need to use the tactic of fear. What he does is just says, don't think about God. You've got all you need. You know, eat, drink, and be happy. And, and, and I had a Hindu friend. I was trying to do evangelize, and eventually he just cut off all relationship with me because something bad happened. I mean, it could have been explained away just by circumstances, really. But what it made him do is want to go away from anything Christian because he thought he had angered uh, the gods and his ancestors. And so, so the devil will do whatever he can do to keep people away from God's people and God's word. And the thing is what Jesus said, how does he drive out him? As Jesus is teaching, demonic forces are, are, are fleeing and are, are terrified. And it's really comforting because how do we, whatever we think about 
things that are demonic, whether we might come from a background where it's, it's quite clear, where it come from a background where there's a spirit of fear. Um, a friend of mine, uh, he was disowned by his family when he became a Christian. He's, he's um, uh, an African because the bad things are happening to the family and they, they, had, they had brought about, that they had angered the ancestors and the other spiritual forces. So therefore, he, his family said, well, you need to stay away from us. And, and so, um, you, you know, he became a Christian, but um, there were consequences to that. And the thing is, wherever there's fear of how you, that's the opposite of the gospel, because what happens is, it comes and it says, it doesn't matter what you're, whatever the spiritual forces there are, if you're a Christian, you're protected. And you know how you drive out demonic forces? Not through a ritual. You tell them the message of who Jesus is. And what was Jesus' message? Well, look at just verse uh, 15. Um, I don't know if I'll put it up here. Yeah. Verse 15, the time has come. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So just have a look. The time has come. So Jesus starts off, and this is his message. It, it's happening now, guys. You've been waiting thousands and thousands of years for Genesis 3 to happen when Satan's going to be crushed. It's happening now. The kingdom of God, that's a bit of a strange thing. And um, um, sometimes you can maybe look at a sort of Bible overview quickly, but the kingdom of God was what God created in, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. God's people with, in God's special place under God's rule perfectly. That's been ripped apart by Satan, but God's going to bring it back through his king. He's going to establish a place where there's perfect relationship, no sin, where people have a relationship with him, and there's going to be no suffering. We don't live in the, we're not there yet. We're starting to see it as Christians, but one day it will be a reality. And so that's what the kingdom of God is. It's coming, it's come here. And how do you get into the kingdom of God? You repent and believe the good news. Now, um, I, I told you something that was not true last week, if you were here. Um, I'm, I'm writing a retraction, and it's not going to be hidden on the back of the newspapers, on the front. I said, and I always thought that the word repent was a military term that meant about turn. But actually, it's probably not tr true, uh, there's some debate, but that's what I was taught. Um, but repent does mean to turn away from it. It means to change and stop thinking that you can solve your problems. Stop thinking that you're in charge of your life. Or stop putting something else in charge of your life. And Jesus is the only one that can do it. You can't be right with God. You can't fix up your life by anything else other than turning to God's king. Why? Because he's the guy that made the world. And he wrote the instruction book to it. And he's saying, come, come back, turn to me. I'm the king. This is really good news. Just trust in me. And so this is the message that will drive us out darkness and destroys all things. Just if you want to see the pictures, the time has come. The kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the good news. Now, uh, the next thing we see, the incident we see is, um, what, what does this look like? What do all the pictures got to do with? Can you see? Medicine. Okay. Uh, Jesus has authority over sickness. And so that's the first that's the thing that we see next. Um, and let me say, <coughs> let me just say, Kevin, okay, people will want to say to you now, if you follow Jesus, you will always be healthy or you won't have sickness. And uh, it's incredibly damaging. In fact, some of the most godly people I know are ones that struggle with illness and disabilities. But what he is showing is saying, remember how, how the devil destroyed God's world? Well, now as he's preaching, he's, he's giving us a glimpse of what his kingdom one day will be like. And he's also showing that he's got power over sickness. And so um, I want to ask you, what do you think the UK's, well, kind of given away, biggest enemy is? Um, so maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, Russia, I don't know, maybe China. Sorry? Oh, someone's not... I thought someone said the European Union. No, um, no. Uh, no, we've got any, we spend, spend money, um, those wonderful aircraft that we looked at, you know, money's gone into the poor defense of countries. But, uh, I know this is really boring, but this is the public sector spending financial year 2023 to 2024. And um, does this have a torch in it? Yes. Right there. Oh, there we go. Huh? Oh, there. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's great. So, 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 so here, 
This is defense. Six percent. Okay. Uh, I mean, education is a good thing, but look here. This is health. Twenty percent, and then social protection. Yeah, I don't know social protection. I had to look this up. I thought, oh, you got eyes. I think that's just caring for anyone that's disabled, elderly, uh, abused, broken, um, benefits. But the, the point, so, so I wish this kind of got away, overshadowed my point, but can you see what the NHS, what money is spent on just combating health and sickness? And you could argue this is combating brokenness and also sickness in society and you know, a lot of its links. But um, 6% versus 20%. Can you see our biggest enemy out there is sickness and health? It's, it's more of an enemy than Russia and China combined. And in an instant, Jesus does that, and he's got rid of that enemy. And so uh, have a look at... Uh, oh, I'll come back to that. Uh, have a look at um, chapter 29, verse 29. So, so Jesus, as soon as Jesus left the synagogue, he went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew, Simon's mother-in-law, who was in bed with a fever, and immediately told Jesus about her. So they've gone to the house, she's got a fever, and uh, you know, just there's no antibiotics, there's no um, uh, doctors, in it. well, no, there were doctors, but they, they, this, is, this is serious, you don't know what's going to happen. A, a fever, and if you've ever had a fever, it's, it's horrible, you know, I'm talking about a horrible fever, with your bed sweating, you, you're cold, you're shivering, um, and so she, she's in a dire situation. And so what does Jesus do? So he went to her, took her hand, helped her up, and the fever left her. And she began to wait on them. Now, what you would, I, th I would just thought, if I had to put that out, people would go, oh, the patriarchy. Look at men. They heal her, and then she has to start waiting on them. This is ridiculous. I, I think the point is, is she she's so healthy um, that in, in an instant, and I know there's doctors in the room, but I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a fever leave someone, and they, they're instantly that well. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. Unless there's a lot of steroids, maybe. But the point is... Um, you know, it, it takes you months to recover. We've got things like long COVID and everything like that. This is supernatural here. And an instant that Jesus shows that the, the brokenness of the world, he has the power to heal it. And then uh, verse 32, that evening after sunset, people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon possessed. And let me say, when they put those two together, uh, you know, again, another thing has been said. Oh, if people are sick, it's, it's, it's demonic forces. You can't say that. There is because of the brokenness of the world. But the point is, people bring them to him. The whole town gathered at his door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. And he drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak about because they knew who he was. So there's two things that are surprising there. Well, first of all, he's got power over, over sickness. Um, and then the weird thing is, the demonic forces know who Jesus is, and he says to them, keep quiet. Because the thing is, we're going to see that Jesus is king, but he's not the king that we might, what, what the world might want. He's a king that's different. He's got a long-term game, and we'll be having a look at that in the next few weeks. Um, he's got something else planned. And so they know who he is, that they, he's God on earth, but... He is, he is saying to them, not, not yet. And the fact that he's got power over darkness and evil to do that shows that he's incredibly powerful. So this king has authority to call people just by who he is. He's not forcing them or bullying them. Uh, they see his authority, his authority to teach. His teaching is because he is the one that wrote God's word. He opens up people's hearts. Their eyes are opened. And as a result, uh, the demonic forces, the forces of darkness and evil are, are running, are, are terrified. And he has authority over sickness and health. So, if we had, I know this, this probably seems a bit, a, a sort of Jesus top top card. Uh, can you see that it came to, you know, it, sickness, health, evil, darkness, leadership. He wins. Now, I want to ask you, have you uh, 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 by the way, I'm, I'm really happy I won the Top Trump game, even though I totally planned it uh, and, and rigged it. But, I mean, I haven't won much, many things. Has anyone won anything 
before anyone wants to share, no one's won the lottery, have they? <laughs> no. Um, I think the biggest thing I won was uh, was uh, uh, this is a, a little a little mini R pod. Um, uh, it's just for putting something in, and actually then even I had to try and I looked like the people that were doing hosting competitions when someone wanted to keep it. But anyway, um, I, that's probably the biggest thing I've won. I, I've never really won anything else. Anyone else won anything before? No. Okay, maybe don't enter a lot of competition. So I don't really feel uh, maybe uh, achievements like top of your class or some sporting achievements. No, no, okay. Should we a bunch of losers, aren't we? <laughs> um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm a winner most of the time. I don't feel like um, I've got life sorted. I mean, I, I remember saying to a friend of mine um, in a previous year, I said, "Oh, just don't you feel like you're just treading water most of the time?" And she said, "No." I feel totally fine. And then she had a nervous breakdown. So, so I thought, oh, well, you know, because um, I, 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 I felt like life, I don't have it all figured. I don't have, I'm not perfect all the time. I lose my temper. Uh, parenting, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, still trying to figure out how to be a good husband. Uh, don't know what I'm doing leading a church. I'm joking. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't feel confident in things most days. And then when it comes to things like evil in the world, Switching on the news. I mean, there's so much to worry about. Um, and I mean, that's actually good. Good by, by the way to look at history because there's, there's always been problems. Um, but personally, I, I feel ah. Oh, but you, I, uh, I wouldn't say you've got Jesus as your top top trump card. You in his deck. He's the winner. He's the king, and he's the one that you want to be on the side of. If sickness and demonic forces go fleeing from him, I wouldn't want to be his enemy, would you? No. no but if he's on, if if you're on his team, that's good. And I'm not, too, I'm not saying that the sickness and, and evil is not going to touch you. But one day it will be destroyed. One day, Jesus is going to finally crush the devil's head. He's starting to unravel his kingdom now slowly. And the, the Satan is terrified. I think that's why there's, there's so many demonic forces being thrown at him. He's absolutely terrified. He knows his end has come. And Jesus is building an army. He's building a people. He's getting people to follow him. And he just calls them. And you know how you can be part of that kingdom? It's not an exam. It's not winning a top trumps game. He just says, repent. Stop living for yourself. The other things that you're thinking are going to save you. I'm the only one that can help you. And just trust me. Trust me. And the trust is not based on how much you trust. The trust is based on who you trust in. And um, when it comes to flying airplanes, no, not the airplane. My wife hates flying uh, an airplane. And now she, so she's got a trip coming up in February. She's terrified just to fly to the States. I love airplane. If I if I had, if I could have been a pilot, I would have been. But my science and eyes and everything didn't work out. But I love flying, and so when it comes to getting onto an airplane, I might have to drag her. Um, but but and I'll go on excited. But um, it, it doesn't matter how we feel about the airplane. Um, it's the airplane that gets us there. And so if the airplane's good, great. And Jesus, it doesn't matter if you walk on confidently or you're just clinging on by fingernails. It's who you trust in. And Jesus is better than any airplane. And so you trust in him. And tomorrow, what does this look like for us? God's king and me tomorrow and the rest of the week and beyond. And I know some of you are facing different difficult things this week, difficult things that you have to do. And then there's some things, a lot of things I don't know. And a lot of them are private, and a lot of them you might think, well, other people won't think that's such a big deal, but it's a big deal to me. I'm holding on by my fingernails. But the king that will destroy Satan finally once and forever, the king that has a power over darkness, we'll see death later on, illness, he's got the power to forgive sins, that king is saying, I want you on my team, come. Follow me. And whatever you're facing tomorrow, know that your king is with you. If you're a small child going to a school, if you're going to that doctor's appointment, 
or you're facing that difficult work situation, God's King is with you. He's by your side if you're a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, you really want to, you need to say, please help me. Because the one thing that matters between life and death is, are you following God's King? Because that's the only thing that matters. Satan's kingdom is unraveling, and, and really the, 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 high, the highest point, the, the biggest hurt is on the cross where Jesus died for our sins and destroyed death. But we're just waiting for the final thing to happen when he, when, uh, he returns. So, tomorrow, hold into Jesus as king. Whatever you're facing, I guarantee you it's not something that he doesn't have power over. And if it doesn't look like you, if you don't understand why he's not dealing with it straight away, you just need to trust him. He knows what he's doing. Let's pray. <laughs> oh, Father God, we come to you people that are, are, are broken, worried. We come to you pe as people looking at other people in church and thinking, oh, they've got it all sorted. Or we look at others and go, oh, they don't have the problems I have. Or we might feel really just like losers. We're just treading water of life. Or we might feel that we've got everything sorted. And Father God, we pray that you would humble us and help us to see that you are the king that comes to destroy and dethrone Satan and all the work he set out to accomplish when he broke the world. And Father God, thank you one day that you will fix the world. And we pray that you would see, we would see you as king, even amidst the darkness. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. I'm going to read a verse and then uh, close in prayer. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Father God, thank you for your kingdom. Thank you that it is coming in part and one day we will see it fully. Thank you that it is good news, great news. We pray for us to hold on to this and for our village, our community and neighborhoods to know that you are king and follow you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.